lucky as he had was try and narrow one down. And we, we did that in a single meeting, but, uh, you know, we thought we'd be making a prototype, which we did for uh, the first round. Each of the teams actually made a, a fully functional prototype. And then uh, we realized, you know, that's a lot of work to do in uh, just a couple of weeks. So then we switched to more of like, well, let's make a presentation, and that's going to be the product. Uh, but what was really neat about it is that it brought a lot of different skills out from different people. I mean, you had uh, presentation skills. There was uh, team leadership, you know, in a very micro-incubation capacity uh, to get everybody working together and, and get a lot done quickly. So it was really a lot of fun, and uh, e it's easy to, to overlook pass by in the hall of what cool ideas they've been thinking about for months that, uh, that you hear about that are good for the company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, what I discovered, well, uh, my personal, uh, I, uh, well, out of six, seven, uh, my personal choice of uh, the project we uh, developed, uh, uh, like, on the, the main, like, on the uh, main blade, what I learned was, we did that uh, project, we uh, implemented that project, and three weeks later, Google uh, releases Google Instant. We felt like, you know, we uh, we were three weeks ahead of Google at this time. Uh, well, they were, they were, you know, we felt proud that uh, we were thinking of the similar rights at least when Google was thinking. Cool. Yeah, Google Dave kind of covered the good things I was going to say, but it was great to work with um, a lot of different see how the different people from the different departments function and um, kind of learn even what they do more on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, yeah, I mean, Dave pretty much said it all. <laughs> it's awesome to work with people you don't normally work with because everybody's usually sequestered in their own um, departments. And so you can get some people who like, who they are, what they do. And so I think for the company as a whole, it's, it's good to have uh, more people to go with that and also working with good people. Well, I guess my closing thought kind of segues into, uh, it's going to segue into what I did at the Web Expo. But yeah, I thought it was, it was a great team building exercise. And also just the fact that, I mean, when we first started doing the projects and we had to actually, we, we initially started off creating everything from, you know, beginning to end. Like, so whatever concepts we came up with, we were thinking about implementation. And then later in this process, when we started doing just presentations, is when you saw some of that the wild ideas of doing like swappy and things like that where we weren't too concerned with the implementation but the amount of ideas that came out were you know they were getting crazier and crazier which which works in a lot of cases um <clears throat> one of the recent experiences i just had last week i was at uh, the web 2.0 expo and how that ties into this is that a lot of it was actually based around just that innovation and uh especially on new products and a lot of the focus on these new products was not only what it did, but also how to make, you know, how to how to bring in revenue with it. Um, and I think we'll go through some of that. So this Web 2.0 Expo is uh, annually held uh, in both uh, California and New York City. So I went to New York City, and it's hosted by O'Reilly Media. They publish a lot of tech books. Uh, I'm sure most people here know that. So first night, I landed in uh, Times Square. Actually, first time I've been to New York City, so it was pretty wild uh, seeing all of that. Uh, never seen so many tall buildings in one place. It's pretty spectacular. Um, it started off with uh, Ignite, which is an event that they have where uh, you have, the, the timing is actually wrong on that. It's actually, they each had five minutes to present, uh, so 15 seconds per slide. And the thing is, um, they're not allowed to control the speed at which the slides move. So every 15 seconds it auto-rotates. So they, they have to time their speech to fit kind of exactly per on each slide. Uh, and at the same time, face the audience and kind of give a presentation. So uh, the topics that were part of this were really varied. I mean, a lot of them didn't have to have anything to do with web. Uh, but they were all of them were really interesting. And uh, some of them were actually really funny. And uh, so the topics included like why coffee is part of our culture, uh, why bar uh, pie charts suck, new, new visualization techniques, and uh, social networking while intoxicated. Uh, that's actually a video that I'm going to show you because uh, it's, it's pretty interesting.
tech support. All right, bear with me for one second, please. Thank you. Uh, it's really great to see a lot of familiar faces in the audience tonight, but I wanted to talk about how I won't remember seeing you tomorrow morning. Um, so this talk is, is all about you know, the self-help that you get about how to work a cocktail party, how to social network. And it's all assumed that you're sober and you're not. And so, you know, when you think about winning friends and influencing people, really, let's think about how do you do that when you're drunk? And you shouldn't really let being drunk hold you back from your social networking dreams. And so, people who know me know that by training I'm a biological scientist, and so I retired, but I came out of retirement for this talk, and I wanted to really crunch the numbers and, and try to understand what I've been doing all this time drunk. And so I, I did a study and there are a few assumptions, right? So assumption number one, um, you're networking while intoxicated. Assumption two, there are photos of you. Assumption three, those photos have clues in them. And so you can analyze those photos for clues. All right, lesson one, try to take a photo in front of a step and repeat. If you don't know what that is, it's like a big white thing with a bunch of logos on it. I have a tendency to take photos in front of things that say absolute vodka on them. Maybe you come to O'Reilly events or some other thing. Lesson one, advanced. Try to take a photo in front of Stephen and Pete with a celebrity, okay? So you see me out there with Pete Cashmore. These are clues to where you were the night before when you wake up and you don't remember where you were. I suggest tonight Esther Dyson, but it's up to you. Lesson two, try to dress loud and proud. So wear something very vibrant. If you don't know photographers like I do, they're really attracted to this stuff. So try to wear loud and proud materials. More advanced, do anything it takes. Wear sunglasses at night, wear a scarf in the middle of the summer, carry around with a pink flamingo. Photographers really do love this shit. And so you have to stand out so that photos appear of you online the next day. So, lesson three, try to attend events with name tags. This is a photo of me with my very, very good friend Harvey, but I wouldn't know that. Uh, um. <laughs> so you see where I'm going with this. But name tags don't have to just be around your neck, they can be on the wall. So, I gave this talk a while back in New York with Lily and Reza, and I'm not really sure who they are, but every time I see Reza on CNN reporting from the Middle East, they say, that's the guy from that Facebook photo I have. So, lesson four, try to take photos of lots of celebrities or lots of women. So you see, I'm, I'm here with Vivek Kundra, the CIO of the country, some other famous folk. Okay, these photos tend to show up online because they're famous. You can also do this with beautiful women and, you know, act surprised when you're standing next to beautiful women and a photographer asks you to get between them. And you say, oh, who, me? Right, between, right here? Take a photo? Okay, I'll, I'll go do that. And so that gets you in the front pages too. But there's really something even more advanced. You can do something called the trifecta. So this is Julia Allison. I'm sure some of you have heard of her. If, if you really, if you come across a celebrity like this and she's got a puppy and she has fans looking at her, just you have to take that opportunity. Now, lesson five. 
large group photos, so there are no name tags, no step or repeat, what do you do? Try to hop into a photo with like eight or ten different people. Someone is bound to take this photo, put it up on Facebook and tag it, and then you can remember where you were the night before. Okay? Now nightclubs are a really great place to do this. You want to get a little more tricky. You have married people hugging you, you have husbands that are mad at you. Okay? <laughs> These photos get around, and you can remember where you were at the night before and who you were social networking with. So, what do you do the morning after? Well, you have to analyze your photos, right? So this photo is not too hard. It was probably taken at Harvard. Um, there were name tags. I had uh, something in my pocket that was blue. That's a pretty good example of what to do correctly. Okay, things, things get harder. So this, this example, there's a lot of women. They're, they're, I'm at a place that begins with a C. Um, it's probably like a cancer fundraiser, right? There's like a ribbon. Okay, and then this is, this is what this is what you don't do, the next example. So if it's rainy, and I might be at a W, and there's only one person, and it's probably my boss's boss's girlfriend, and you just, you don't want to get into these kind of situations because, like I said, these things end up on Facebook. They get tagged, and then you get fired. Uh, so, you know, for the truly, truly advanced, what you want to do is staff up, and you want to have a few interns follow you around, hire a photographer, hire a videographer, a small staff of four or five people can save you from making mistakes while you're social networking, while intoxicated. So, I hope you learned something. Go out there after this event, social network while intoxicated, use these rules, thank you. So yeah, so that, that was an example of one of the speeches uh, that was given. I, I thought that was the funniest one, the most memorable one. Um, so that was the first night. Um, on the other days, they had this uh, sponsor hall, which is basically this large area with a lot of uh, booths of uh, different sponsors that uh, are helping to host this event. Um, and so the sponsors, they, it includes Microsoft, Canonical, uh, New York Times was actually there. They had an iPad app. Um, that they wanted to kind of demo for people, uh, Opera as a browser, um, and several others. Um, during this uh, this event, uh, the in the sponsor hall, they actually had some of the more interesting ones. There's actually three video, uh, which is this company that's making a augmented reality uh, and uh, 3D type game. Uh, so basically, they sell. I think they've partnered up with Nestle. And they're selling uh, cereal boxes that have, you can actually cut out 3D glasses from the cereal box. And uh, using that, you go to their website and you could actually um, play this 3D game. Not only that, the, the cereal box also has a uh, augmented reality tag that allows you to show, you can play around with 3D characters um, in this, you know, interactive scene. Real quick, I'll show a little piece of this. of 3D and using uh, augmented reality tracker, so you don't even need a mouse uh, to play. So the main uh, component of this, this expo were the keynote speeches. Um, so it had several speakers uh, from throughout the web industry, and also a lot of investors, and that's kind of where the innovation uh, component comes in, is because these investors kind of talked about you know how they go about scoping out the best uh, innovations and best products uh, that they would like to invest in. 
Um, Dennis Crowley, he's the uh, the founder of Foursquare, and he you know talked about his product and how how they're going about you know grabbing in a lot of new users, um, and a kind of where Foursquare is going to be eventually uh, ending up as you know what kind of a product is going to eventually end up as. Esther Dyson, and she's actually an investor. Um, what's it? She's she works a lot with like uh, the space program, uh, aeronautics and such. She's really interested in uh, private space shuttles. Um, another thing she's also interested in is in, uh, in medical technology. What she's actually holding up right there, it looks like headphones. Uh, it's actually a device that's still in the testing phase, but it's not consumer ready yet. But it basically, it's like two, uh, it's like headphones that emit a certain uh, frequency of light, and you put them in your ears. And what it, what it does is if you're in an area of the world where uh, it's mostly dark, you know, 90% of the time it's dark out. Uh, basically, this uh, gets rid of uh, depression symptoms associated with, you know, not having enough sunlight. And supposedly, you put it in for five minutes and uh, it kind of makes you happier. Uh, so, which was interesting. And she said uh, that, you know, the people who developed this said you can't put it in for more than 10 minutes. No, you know, nobody should. And apparently, they haven't tested what happens to a person if they do put it in for more than 10 minutes. But, it's, it's interesting, regardless. And that's uh, Brett Taylor. He's uh, he's the CTO of Facebook. Um, he's also, I believe, he's also the founder of FriendFeed. Um, so you know, he he's talking about uh, a lot of real-time applications um, where Facebook is going to be going um, with a lot of their real-time stuff. And uh, a lot of questions were thrown at him too from the audience. Uh, they basically had this thing where you can uh, tweet a question. Um, and you know they would pick a few. And so some people ask random questions, you know, like how's Mark, Mark's coding techniques and all this and that. So uh, he was, it was actually pretty interesting. And that's Tim O'Reilly from O'Reilly Media. That's my picture with him for an opportunity. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he, he basically runs the publishing company uh, O'Reilly Media. Uh, not too interesting of a person to talk to though. <laughs> <laughs> So here's, uh, here's a, one of the final events, which was uh, the startup night that they had. And this is where they had uh, 27 different startup companies that had uh, all of their products. And a lot of these companies actually have, uh, you know, they have customers that actually use their product. Um, so they're not like, you know, bare grounds just with an idea. Um, and they had booths set up with demos of all their different products. Um, basically, everyone that was there that attended the conference was able to walk around to each one, uh, directly interact with these people, you know, see how their product worked, and then uh, we would all go back and vote on which one we thought was the most marketable or uh, most profitable. And along with all the attendees, uh, Tim O'Reilly and uh, this investor that he was with were also walking around, and they each got to pick uh, one of their own. And um, what would happen is the winners, the three top winners, would actually be on stage. Um, kind of have questions thrown at them, you know, kind of being grilled on, you know, how reliable is their product. And this is pretty interesting because um, these guys basically had to defend their product on stage. Uh, some of them looked like really nervous, you know, because <laughs> they were having questions thrown at them. They had to answer it with something uh, something good. And this guy, he actually developed a location-based product called Glimpse. Basically, uh, he's an ex-Microsoft employee, and he started this company where it's a phone, it's an app for the iPhone where you can actually uh, broadcast your location and your location gets broadcasted at a certain radius. So let's say 10 mile radius. And uh, it had a DK rate. So like every five minutes it would go down to, you know, five miles and then 2.5 miles. And then. So uh, he thought that would be a really profitable product, especially when uh, you have companies like Foursquare and uh, even Facebook that are trying to, trying to get into the, you know, this location based uh, app market. And that's all.
about oh. the design because we knew you would like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been awesome to work here. I mean, I was really excited to get hired at Turbine, but it was very downtrodden because I'm going to be sad to leave. So I'm not going to be excited until I leave the, the doors for the last time. The revolving door. Yeah. <laughs> and I cut right through it. Okay. Good job, good job. Before anyone eats this. <laughs> good idea, Jeremy. Do you want me to turn it? You got it? Well, this is for Jim Wilk, so. No, no, I meant do you want me to turn the table? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I've never had a cake. I know, right? You never had a cake ever? Not like this. <laughs> Not from my work. Not when you leave. Is that like. What is that? It's Elvish. It's yes. Elvish. <laughs> is it like paper or something? Yeah, but I mean. I don't know, but it's edible. That's yeah, awesome. they do like an edible it's print. It's kind of copy they need. Yeah. Oh. Meredith brought them in a picture, like an 8x11, yeah. and they just, oh, they have some awesome. kind of device. Oh, I have Office this. Mom, I have this yeah. in a paper. <laughs> Chris, do you want any more of this? Or? No, that's good. Thank you.